Why did soldiers fight in tightly packed lines through most of history? Why did their armies move in massive, tightly packed formations? They did so for coordination, communication, constitution, and concentration of power. Battles were not those easy to see, easy to command, clear cut things we see in movies or in video games. When it comes to video games, even the most epically depicted battles in video games, as in the Total War games, are puny in comparison to actual battles. In Total War, at most you have only a few thousand per side. But the average battle in history had tens of thousands and up to hundreds of thousands of soldiers. These battles did not cover one city block or two city block, they covered miles. You literally could not see the far side of the line if you were on one side of the line. Even in the middle of a battle line, you probably could not see the far side. And these had to move through various trains, through towns that would get in the way of these battle lines, through obstacles like hills and stuff, and had to communicate over that distance. And they had to do it at the fastest possible way they could. Now we have radios, meaning the quickest way we can communicate is by radio speed. But previously, if the quickest thing you had was a horse, the quickest way you could communicate was a horse. If you had no horse, the quickest way you could communicate was a man on foot. Meaning, you could not give that unit all the way outside the battlefield a command right then and they all instantly obeyed and changed direction. No, if you tell the cavalry to charge, they're charging. And if you notice that the enemy is about to surprise them, you can't get to them. Because the quickest thing you got to get to them is a horse running. And they're on horses running. They're out there. They're already sent. It's fire and forget. Hopefully your commands are good. So you want to stay close so you can communicate with them as quickly as possible. So when something happens, you can change their course. Also... It's easier to coordinate men when they're closely packed. If they're in large formations spread over miles, it's hard enough to get those to move in unison and not men to straggle off and get cut down because they're out in front beyond everyone else. You need them close together so that they can move together and work together. As the quickest way you can communicate with them and coordinate is by voice. Also, you want your power in tightly packed areas that you overwhelm what the enemy has in the area. If you have two equally sized armies, let's say both of 10,000 men, if one decides to put their soldiers shoulder to shoulder and the other one decides to spread them out with a three feet between them, well, when they clash, the one with them shoulder to shoulder is probably going to have three men to every single man of the other army. That means their three men will cut down every single one they face. Mean at the end of that battle, one army is running away in disorder, and the army that packed tightly probably has only lost a few men of any because of how close together they were, and the fact that they had overwhelming odds every time in engagement. In contrast, you could have an army that has 100 men versus an army with 200 men. Way small armies. But the army with 200 men spreads their soldiers out wide, and the army with 100 men packing them square. Down with 100 men is probably only going to fight like 20 men at a time, meaning they'll win every engagement and most likely those men will run. That leads you to another thing, constitution. What's the men's constitution? If they are, are by their own, or seem to be by their own because there's few men around them because they're so spread out, once they see a force that's tightly packed coming at them, that will seem much bigger than their army. Even if their army is technically bigger, their constitution will fail, their morale will fail, and they will run. That's how armies lose battles. Most casualties happen after army routes. And the army routing is how they lose a battle. If an army routes, they lose. You do not want your men to route. You want them nearby each other so they feel that they are strong and in a mass. If they are not, they will route and they will run. Therefore, armies concentrate the troops close together so that they had the support of each other, they could communicate. They could coordinate and move in formations to flank their opponents and their concentration of powers, much power in one area, to overwhelm the enemy, even if the enemy had more troops in total. If they could have more troops in one area, they could win that area, cause that part to rout, and cause the whole enemy army to rout. That was how you did it. If you broke up an army to fight one-on-one, -on -one, you end up with only one man alive at the end. 
Because most likely your average soldier is equivalent to their average soldier. Meaning, it can go either way. And so if everyone fights a one-on-one -on -one duel, only one man ends up alive in the end. And even if you had half your forces, which you wouldn't end up in this case left, if you had half your force left, you lost that battle if you won it. Because you can't advance. You need most of your army to continue advancing. So you concentrate. Now let's say if they had two to every one. Well, most likely, two men would defeat one man in 90% of the situations, if not more. That means the army with two versus one wins every single one of their engagements. And they dominate. That's why they fought in tightly packed lines and why they moved in massive formations. The only reason they broke up is because modern artillery and explosives break up that. It is too destructive and we can communicate over vast distances with radio. Before that we couldn't. That's why they fought in tightly packed lines and in massive formations. Like and subscribe.